All right, on the template I gave you, go to sheet three. All right, the first thing here is uh, the crystal violet uh, standard concentration. Um, and so the number was from the stock room, uh, 0 0.01593. And the units are weird. You see the units here? That's grams of crystal violet chloride per liter. And so what is the mol molar concentration? Well, the molar mass of crystal violet is shown here in green. It's 408.0 grams per mole. And so we can calculate the molar concentration here. It's just going to be grams divided by 408. You see that? And so uh, the molarity of our crystal violet here is 3.904 times 10 to the minus 5 molar. The sodium hydroxide, um, somebody should have it. What was the sodium hydroxide? 1083. All right. It's 1083. What did we do to it? We did a... Dilution. Yeah, we did a 1 to 2 dilution. So I'm going to put point 1083 here in the formula. And so it's just 1083 divided by 2, right? Point three. No, point point yeah. Point .0. molar sodium hydroxide. All right, everybody should have the same. Are we good? All right, run one. Run one was, uh, let's verify this. Let's, I do it different sometimes, semester to semester. So run one, how much, this is old, also this spreadsheet's I think 2006 or 2007. So the DI water, how many mils do you use? Run one. 10? Sodium hydroxide, how much? Five. CV? Okay, run one's good. How about run two? That's good. That's good too. All right, so rather than punching these concentrations by hand, we'll just have Excel do it for us. And that is, we have to do what? Whenever we mix solutions, we have to do solution dilution. And so uh, the hydroxide here is a 10 to 30 dilution, right? And so I just did a 10 to 30 dilution of our standard, which is in cell B, dollar five, right? Oh, sorry, it's not a 10 to 30, it's C10. It's a five to 30. So C10 over 30. This would be C11 over 30. And so right off the bat, you notice run one and run two. Run two has double the concentration. Do you see that? All right, now we're gonna get the crystal violet concentration molarity. This is the initial crystal violet concentration. And so we have to do a solution dilution. And so all it is is initial volume over final volume times the concentration. So that's what the formula in red is. You just copy and paste it. So there's a little bit of um, stuff. The rate, we made this um, pseudo, what did we make this, pseudo? Pseudo M, and how did we make it pseudo M order? How did we make this reaction pseudo M order? Of which? We make the hydroxide concentration very high, right? Yeah. And so we have to show some justification that it is, you know, because how, 
how do we know? I mean, the, the concentration of hydroxide is very small. 18 millimolar and 9 millimolar. That's small. Isn't that too small? 9 millimolar hydroxide, when you're used to working with 6 molar, is extremely small, isn't it? And so maybe, it, maybe it's not enough. And so the next two calculations shows this. We set up a little ice table here. So um, here in cell C21 is the initial concentration of CB. Cell E21 is the initial concentration of hydroxide. And then we're going to do a change. We're going to say when 90%, do you see this reaction, uh, the, the equation I wrote here? 0 0.9, 0 0.9 of our original. And so the change is 90%. We lose 90% of our original. That means we have 90% reaction. When we have 90% reaction, we've consumed 90% of the CV, which is our limiting reagent, but how much of the hydroxide have we consumed? And so this, this next calculation is, at 90% reaction of CV, we've consumed 100 over the initial for hydroxide times 100, which is 0.129%. You see that? So did the hydroxide really change over the course of this reaction? No. no. Even if you had 90% reaction, it really didn't change. Now in run two, we started with a higher concentration of hydroxide, so the change in the hydroxide is even smaller. The hydroxide concentration is fairly constant, so we just wanted to show that here. As seen above. So um, then it's okay, the pseudo M order is okay. <coughs> we can determine M and K prime from graphical analysis. We have to figure out which plot was most linear. Which plot is most linear for you? The natural log? All right, so that was the natural log of the concentration. And so let's take a look at run. My run two was triple nine. My run one was triple nine for the R squared. The other plots had poor correlations, less than 0.96. For me, you have to put in your number. K prime comes from the slope. And so we just, this is the slope from run one, this is the slope from run two. Then we can calculate K, but in order to calculate K, we need to know what first. We need to know N. N. And so the K primes, we I, I insert these manually. So I just go back and run one. I'll just take a look. Um, I see my slope here, right there. And K would be the negative of the slope, so I'll just use the positive. It's 0 0.044879. So I'll go back here, G3, 0.0. 4487 then I'll go to run 2 point 1 3 2 4 5 1 3 2 4 5 point 1 3 2 4 5 all right I in order to calculate my K I can't do my K calculation yet because I need to know N. I don't know what N is. So 
look below here. To determine n, we will use the method of initial rates, but instead of using initial rates, we'll use k prime. So we set up an equation like this and then solve for n. So what's the n, what n should be? B43 or B42, the ratio of the k's. Over F11 over F10. F11 over F10 is the ratio of the concentration. Mm -hmm. So this gives me my um, n. What order is it in n? Make sure I have this correct. Check my plot again. I get 1.56 order for my n. Uh, my data is made up. Okay, so what I'm going to do now that I have my n is I can calculate my k. k value should be the same. The units for k are going to be kind of weird because the units for k are going to be dictated by the units for rate. The units for rate are molar per minute. And so here, for CV plus, I get molar because it's to the first. But for hydroxide, that's molar to the, to the 1.56 power. And so the units for K here are going to be this, really weird units, because the units have to cancel out to make the rate molar per minute. And so I'll take the average K value. I have two of them here. They should both be the same. Get that. Where M and N are this. And so now I have the complete rate law, because I know what K, M, and N are. So this is uh, what we want here. We have t I have too many digits here. Okay, any questions on this? That that's pretty much all the calculations for this lab. So we should go 